properties of logarithms. So let's look at the three basic properties of logarithms. The first one is the multiplication property. When you multiply, you add. So I think of it, I like to multiply and I like to add. When you divide, you subtract, okay? So when you divide, you subtract. The not last one is the exponent property. And the exponent actually just pops out front. Um, instead of using the dot, you can say p log base b of x. You don't really need to have that dot in there to mean to multiply. So now let's look at some um, basic ones first. So when you're first starting out, what might be helpful is if you put your formulas on a little cue card or scratch paper, just so you don't have to keep looking back in your book. Eventually you'll have them memorized, and you won't be able to use a cue card on a test, but it's just a handy little tidbit. Let's look at the first one. Well, I have a division, so I know I'm going to be subtracting. I'm actually going to be using this guy right here. So that's going to be log base 3 of the top, which is x, minus log base 3 of the bottom, which is 5. Now some instructors are going to make you actually figure out what log base 3 of 5 is. But for right now, I just want to show you how to use these properties. Okay? Let's look at the next one. Well, the next one I'm multiplying. So that's this guy right there. So that's going to be log base 7 of the first number, which is 2, plus because remember, when we multiply, we add log base 7 of x. Now, this base part is really important to put in there because if you don't put a base in there, we assume it's 10, okay? So let's look at the last one. The last one has this guy. It's an exponent. So remember, he pops out front. So we're following our last formula. So that will be 4 log base 5 of x. Okay, so now that we have these down, let's look at a couple more complicated ones. These are a little more complicated, but actually, we're still using our basic formulas, okay? So let's look at the first one. It doesn't matter if I decide to split up the division or the multiplication first. I'm going to do the division. So I'm going to have log base 3 of x minus, because I'm doing the division, log base 3 of yz. Now I have this multiplication here, so I need to simplify that. So that's going to give me log base 3 of x minus parentheses, because it's minus what I'm going to do here. Log base 3 of y plus log base 3 of z. Okay. But to simplify it even further, I'm going to need to distribute this negative through, okay? So my final answer is going to look like this. Log base 3 of x minus log base 3 of y minus log base 3 of z. Okay. Well, let's look at the next one. Well, this one has a square root in it. And whenever you have a radical, you want to change it to the exponent. So a square root, remember, is the same thing as x to the 1 half. So that's what I'm going to do first. So I'm going to have the log base 4 of 5x to the 1 half. Okay. But it's just x to the 1 half, not the 5, because the 5 isn't in the radical. Okay. So this means to multiply. So I'm going to have log base 4 of 5 plus log base 4 of x to the 1 half. Well, remember, when I have an exponent, that actually is going to pop out front. So my answer for this one is going to be log base 4 of 5 plus 1 half log base 4 of x. Well, let's look at this last one. Now, instead of just one of it being to the power of a half or the square root, it's the whole thing. So we still have a multiplication, but I think I'm going to pull out my exponent first. So that's going to give me 1 half log base 3 of xy. 
Well, x times y we can split up as log base 3 of x plus log base 3 of y. So that's going to be 1 half parentheses. Now that means everything here. Log base two, 3 sorry, of x plus log base 3 of y. So now my final step is I can distribute this through. I'm running out a little bit of room, so I'm going to put it right up here. So I'm going to have 1 half log base 3 of x plus 1 half log base 3 of y. So let's look at one more that gets a little more complicated. Okay, there's a lot of stuff happening in this one, but we're going to break it apart just like we've been doing. So remember, I like to do the division first. So we're going to call this log base 2 of x plus 1. Now, x plus 1 is together. We can't split that up. Minus log base 2 of y, the square root of z. Now, I'm going to look at this guy. I am multiplying y times the square root of z. So, I'm going to break that guy up. So, he stays the same. Minus, now I'm going to put a parenthesis because it's minus all this stuff. So, I'm going to have log base 2 of y plus log base 2. Now remember, the square root of z is the same thing as z to the 1 half. So I'm going to call this z to the 1 half. Okay, now my last step is to actually pop this out front. Well, actually I have two more steps, but I'll show you. So I have log base 2 of x plus 1 minus log base 2 of y plus 1 half log base 2 of z. And why I said I had two more steps left is because I'm going to distribute this negative through. Okay, So my final answer is going to look like this. Log base 2 of x plus 1 minus log base 2 of y. And remember, I have to distribute it to everything. Minus 1 half log base 2 of z. And that is the answer. Not too bad, right? Just remember you gotta use your formulas and keep breaking it up. For more practice with logarithms, be sure to go to www.pycrest.com for lots of free math worksheets with the solutions.